Good evening. Welcome to Eretz Israel. Tonight's uh, look into Likuti Moran. We're on Torah 106 in the first section. And we've been going at this for uh, five years now. Uh, and this particular Torah can be taken many ways, which is part of the universality and the infinity of the Torah. That every person brings themselves to the table and the Torah brings back something new. Ashrei Maskil Adab, Yom Ra'am Tehu Adonai. The verse is from Tehillim 41. Fortunate is the intelligent person or the person who causes intelligence to the poor person. Sounds like a good thing. Why? Because on an evil day, Hashem will save him. So it seems like the, the, the first formula we're getting here is that helping the poor, teaching the poor, and of course, the big question is, what kind of poor are we talking about? But helping them, teaching them, will merit a person protection on a bad day, the day you don't want to be, you know, in a place where a terrible thing happens. As one example. Okay, Rabbi Nachman is going to take it a little Deeper, let's see. There is no poverty, the Torah says in Mesechenedarim. There's no poverty except the poverty of the mind, of dot, of knowledge. But not just information knowledge, rather the knowledge of how to use information, the knowledge how to be in the world. An aware being. Okay, so we have two categories now. We already have poverty can be a lack of dot, and it can also obviously be a lack of money, or ability to pay your bills. And someone who doesn't have an intelligence or a person who doesn't have money needs mercy. We have to have mercy on these people. It reminds me that the times the people say, well, I don't give to them because they might use it for drugs. <laughs> uh, well, when you go to the pharmacy, what are you using your money for? You know, well, Abraham, it's not that kind of drugs. Uh, okay, well, your drugs are for your pain and his drugs are for his pain. In other words, that we're supposed to give charity to the righteous, okay? Because their soul enables our charity to bounce to a higher level. Literally, there's a whole Torah about that, also by Rabbi Nachman. But a general person who's at the level of on the street looking for a fix, looking for a next cold beer, you know, the idea of giving to him is not that you're enabling his drug or alcohol problem. We're talking about a quarter, 50 cents, a shekel, two shekels. We're talking about Showing mercy. The, mer the revelation of mercy is what it's about. Not about the money. That a person should feel other people care about him in some small way. That's a healing. Now this Rachmanut, he says, Ki en Rachmanut there's no greater Rachmanut than upon a person who doesn't know about God, who doesn't know about the Torah, who doesn't know about the proper way to live. And this poverty of knowledge has two levels. Klalut or Pratut. Klalut means a person who doesn't even have the knowledge to know that he doesn't know. He's not home altogether. His awareness is so entrenched in the nuts and bolts and the nitty-gritty of life, he doesn't even have the awareness that he needs awareness. And that requires tremendous mercy to have a, for a person because you just it's so easy to judge them and we can't. And the second level, Pratut in the precision or the, the detailed way are the people that have knowledge, that have intelligence, they have dot, they have awareness, 
But because we already have learned many times, every person's knowledge goes up and down. His mind expands. His mind contracts. One day he's happy and the world is great. The next day, stay away. That guy's this far from, you know, leaving this world. There are people like that. Now, everybody goes up and down, but most people don't go to the extremes of up or, God forbid, the extremes of down. And so both of these aspects, that you can be a smart, intelligent, educated, caring, per personable person, but there's a day when you wake up and your brain is closed. Something pushes your button, something you see in the news, something somebody says, and it, your brain just goes, what? Closes the window, and you feel angry at the world, angry at yourself, angry at God, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So those two levels still require mercy. Now, and mercy could just be a smile, a good word, an offering of a good deed, even if they don't take it. Just the fact that you offer, you know, sometimes I don't have any change or, or money in my pocket to give to a, one of these people that are like begging on the sidewalks or at the, at the traffic lights. I offer them an orange or a banana, whatever I got in my bag. And a lot of times they don't want to take the fruit. And that's okay. You still did the mitzvah. You still extended the mercy outward into the human existence. And that's important. And the Rebbe goes on to tell us, and there are people that have no dot about Avodah Tashem. They don't know how to serve God. And, <clears throat> and it takes a very intelligent person to help them learn about God. Not just anybody who opens a book and share it with someone else and inspire them. Not everybody can, can give over what he learned in a way that another person can receive it. So that's a Baal Seichel, someone who has enough intelligence to be able to share what he's learned. Now, some people are very intelligent people, but they're just not perversed in the kind of work like we're doing right now, talking Torah. Okay. This person has entered what is called mochin de katnut, small mindedness, small brains, literally. And that small mindedness doesn't just mean he, oh, he doesn't, he's a racist or he's a, he, he, he can't bear the, you know, the smell of scrambled eggs in the morning when he passes the diner. Well, it's a diner. What do people eat in the morning? Scrambled eggs. You don't like the smell? Go somewhere else. Why are you getting angry? You know, I'm being a little facetious, but that happens too. You know, but the small mindedness is can be in an intelligent person, as we just said. Okay. But this person still needs to get back to the expanded mindset of not letting the little things of life bother him. When a person comes to expanded consciousness and the world is big and the world is good and the world is one and we have a God and we have a law and we have a nation and we have a land and we have people everywhere that, that believe in these very important concepts, which is part of Mohin de Gadlut, expanded consciousness. Usually the Rebbe describes mm -hmm. it as your next ob ob awareness of the greatness that surrounds you, that fills you. Now, this person, when he works his way through the closed mindedness of a, one of those cold, wet mornings where you don't want to leave the house, but you have to, when you work through that smallness and you wake up and you, you're on the sidewalk and you're in mud or snow or whatever it is that bothers you. You say, no, I'm going to let this bother me. I can get through this. This is not a big deal. It's everything's fine. When he works that out, and usually I use a self-dialogue just like that. When I get there, and it really helps. Talk to yourself and tell yourself how fine everything really is and there's no problem that cannot be handled at this very moment. All I need to do is get in my car and drive the yeshiva or go to a client. What's wrong with that? Well, the traffic and the 
you know, the Arabs are shooting in the highway. Oh, that's, <laughs> you know, who wants to be in that pink, yeah. you know, in that pinball machine? But it's out there. But this God loot, when you work your way through it, all the negativity leaves you. He says it, all the dinim are removed. Now that's important because when the dinim are removed, you sweeten something in the world. And that reverberates out into the world, to the people around you, to your family, no matter if they live in another continent. Because we're all interconnected on a global network of soul. That's the true unified field that Einstein was looking for. It's called the Shekhinah. The divine presence is everywhere. It's hidden some places. It's revealed in other places. But we're all connected to it somehow or we couldn't live. Or we'd be living like, I don't want to even put words into it. Okay, so he brought, brings upon himself chasadim rachamim. By doing the work yourself and not having to have somebody else, you know, come and help you work through something, but you do it yourself, you draw great kindness upon yourself and mercy. And then you become the person that can go out and sweeten somebody else's morning, perhaps. And this is what our sages said in Mesechah Brachot Gedola Dea Shnitna Ben Shtei Otiot. Greatness is dot because it was given between two names of God. Right? These two names of God, he calls them, they're called Otiot in the Lashon of Chazal. And he brings the source, Ki El De Ot Hashem. That God, because God is a God of knowledge. And the two words uh, or names of God surround a concept that it's like elevating the concept, just in the structure of a sentence. And they explain to the perush, when you come to this greater expanded consciousness, what happens is you actually arouse those names. Those names that are in the cosmic realm that are, that are channeling those forces. And we're talking about non-play, non-place, non-space, non-time. It's just, it, it's here. It just doesn't have time and it doesn't have space. And we have to access it through the proper channels. But that place is aroused to give mercy and kindness to the person that does that work on himself. And this, this is also re represented in the verse from, from King David. Chesed el, the kindness of God, kol ayom. You know, there are days it sure doesn't seem like God's kindness is, is just floating in the air. We've all been through them. But we're talking about the person who does the work to remove it from his heart, from his mind. To contradict the very state of mind that we're in. In other words, to be a self-critical individual. Critical is not negative here. Self-critical means I learn to examine myself and look and say, Avram, what's your problem? <laughs> Why can't you smile? Why can't you be happy with this day? What's so bad in your life that you're going to spread that in the world? When you, That's self-critical self thinking that you apply your mind to where you're at and you cause a change in your being. And this person receives new mercy and kindness. And Ashrei Maskil He goes back to the verse now from, from Tehillim. Fortune is the person who informs and makes intelligent the poor person. That could be yourself. When you have poorness of mind, poorness of attitude or a pit or, or a worldview, or life perception. That person's fortunate when he learns to do this for others or himself. He's in smallness. He makes himself intelligent by using some of the tools we talked about. And he turns himself, expands his mind. And then on the evil day, when things are good in the world, because there's there's many levels of judgment. Think of it like this. There's rings and rings of judgment about on a person, on a family, on a community, on a neighborhood, on a town, on a city, and even on a nation, and even on a race. 
and even on a planet. <laughs> Where are we going to run from that? Okay, so, but by doing the work on ourselves, we automatically push it away and remove that negativity. And that's God saving him. And all the judgments, all the negative forces are, are sweetened. But if he can't do that for himself, what's his advice? She the brilliance. Rabbi Nachman shows you the biggest secret of all. When you don't have something, give it to somebody else. Now, can you give something to somebody else that you don't have? Well, because if you don't have a quarter in your pocket, give a nickel. Or if you don't have a good word for somebody, make one up. Or if you can't bend over to pick up the paper that fell from someone's notebook, learn. But when you show that mercy, when you show that thing that you don't have to someone else, you're making a vessel to receive that very quality. Because just like nature, we say, abhors, doesn't like a vacuum. It's always going to fill a vacuum. Well, the same is true on the spiritual plane. If you create a vacuum by giving goodness, you create a vessel to receive new goodness. And if you create an emptiness of goodness, God forbid, you know, people do things that create a negative, an absence of goodness, then well, guess what fills that clay, that vessel? We don't want to know. And this way, though, this very quality that would give to someone else that we think we don't have, it's aroused to come to us. That, that's the whole Torah. And I think if we could just live that uh, for a few minutes a day, it's going to change every day. We should all be blessed to go with these ideas, to practice them. Because when we learn Torah, you should look around yourself for something that's happening that emerges from those ideas in your everyday life. And then you'll see you are living a living Torah. God bless. We'll see you again.